I'm saying we appreciate the Lord and we give him a mighty clap. The Lord is good. The Lord is wonderful. Wonderful worship that was so great, so inspiring. Let's appreciate this team and the Lord bless them. Thank you. Please, let's come closer and the Lord will bless us. Amen. How I pray that we give, I get more volume for this because those ones are sounding like there is a little echo from there, but this one needs more sound. Amen. Good. Thank you. That one is better and uh, too much. So just let's reduce it so that it doesn't actually also. It's good to have a balance. Wonderful. This evening, I want to welcome you into the presence of God. It's a blessing again to have you and to come to you by the word of God this night. And I want to begin a long, long, long series, quite a series that will take us some time, but it will actually leave us in a platform or in a place where we have a lot of understanding. You see, David was saying, give me understanding that I may live. The Bible says that since I heard of your faith, Ephesians 1 verse 15, since I heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for the saints, I have not ceased to pray and to give thanks to God for you, praying that the God of all knowledge and wisdom may give you the spirit of enlightenment, that you may know him better, and that your eyes of understanding being enlightened, that you may come to know how great is the riches of his glory the, the power that is in us and the exceedingly uh, greatness of his power. That is now in verse 18 of uh, some, or rather Ephesians 1 verse 18. And therefore, I want to call you to make a lot of understanding and make a lot of writing in a good place so that you can be able to learn. My desire, my calling, it is to make you to learn and to teach you the truth that you may know him better. That is my calling. I want to be a one that sheds light of the truth of God's word. Taking time to teach it not hit and run messages but taking time and teaching the people that all of us may come to the knowledge of the truth and the purpose is not just to come to the knowledge of truth that is getting to know him better the purpose is that we may be established firmly in christ and that we can be able to serve him effectively so I wish you can understand those three things. That the purpose is to make you learn and understand the truth of God's word. That you may be established firmly in your faith in your walk. That you may be established in Christ. Both in good times and in bad times of this life. In whatever stage and status you will ever be in life. You will be able to make a stand because you know the truth. Knowledge makes you to be established and also to make you effective in your service and in fulfilling the purpose for Christ. And therefore today, I want to begin a series of this message that I call God's salvation to mankind. God's salvation 
to mankind. It is something that I want to go through in depth. And uh, I know the Lord will help you to understand salvation. And uh, the subtopic, the topic is God's salvation to mankind. And the subtopic is understanding the plan, the pathway, and the package of salvation. Understanding the plan, the pathway, and the package of salvation. That is what I will be dealing with. By the time, I may not be able to estimate how long it will take me, but I want to tell you there will be very important subjects that you need to know so that you can be able to understand about salvation. And I want to ask a question. How many people are saved this evening? If you are saved, lift up your hand. If you are saved. Now, if you are saved, lift up your hand very well. Lift it up. All of us, it seems all of us in this house, quite a great number, we are saved. What does it mean to be saved? What is salvation? What do you understand? If someone who doesn't know the gospel and wants to know salvation, what can you say is salvation? What is salvation? You know, there are people who think because I get to, I go to that church, I am saved. There are people who believe because I pray, I am saved. There are people because I do good things. I am a good person. I am not like others. So they do comparison. I don't do what others do. I am a good person. I am honest in business. I am faithful. I'm not immoral. So those people, they can say, you see, I'm also saved. You know, I know there is God. And uh, we are all children of God. And we are all created by God. So I believe that is what salvation is. Many people may have a lot of things to say about salvation because you know I am born in the family of believers my mother my, my dad are Christians in fact they are pastors and so I was born in the church they did marriage or they did their wedding in church and so from everything about me I am saved and many people they think because others, because of their churches or religions, because I have fulfilled some requirements, I am baptized, I am, I am capable now of receiving the Holy Communion. You see, I have been blessed by the pastor, by the reverend, and by the great man of God. And so people, they think that they, they are those stages even unto salvation. But basically, what is salvation in simple terms? Can we be able to look at somebody? Do we understand what salvation is? Do we understand the plan of God, the pathway and the package of salvation? And that is why I'm telling you, people of God, it is not as simple as you think. It is not as easy as you may think it is a one-part message or series message. That is why I want us to begin with part one today. And when we talk of salvation, today I want us to do part one. And I want to talk about divine election or predestination. Predestination. That is what I want to deal with. So, we will be dealing with salvation. The topic will be salvation. God's man, salvation to mankind. But every uh, Wednesday, 
for the next few weeks we will be dealing with a subtopic so that we can get to know the various elements, facets and uh, e areas that we need to understand about God's salvation. So tonight, as we share about salvation, let's talk about divine election. And that is where salvation begins. I want to go from the very foundation so that you can be able to go through the whole journey, the whole pathway, and understand the whole package of salvation. In the book of Romans, chapter number 8, verse 28, a good verse that we like to quote. Romans chapter number 28, verse 28 to verse 30. That's where we'll be reading this night. And this one will form the foundation and uh, a very uh, important point of our teaching. And we know that all things work together for good. Look at that. And there are various parts in that, in that verse alone. Alone. So that you should not... It is, doesn't apply to all people. But the Bible says, and we know. Not everybody knows this. But we who have come to believe in Christ Jesus and have received him, we know that all things, including everything praise the lord all things they work together they team up they agree to cooperate and work together and for good not for bad for good they work both the good and the bad all things they work together for good to those, not to everyone. That is, I am telling you, there are various elements in that verse. Only to those who love God. Mm -hmm. To those who love God. And another thing about those who love God. And those who are the called. So these are people who love God. And who have been called by God according to his purpose. So does this verse apply to everyone? No. There is that which the scripture is addressing. Who is the scripture addressing? The Bible is specific. And it is saying all things are working together and when it says all things i know you may be broken hearted today i know you may be betrayed today i know you may have done things but i am saying everything work together for good only to those that is the 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 the, the line of separation the discrimination is only to those who love god and who are called only a category of people so if there are people who are not called by god and calling i'm not saying calling into ministry apana i'm talking of being called to himself before being called for his work you see we are called first to him to belong to him then to actually serve him that is ministry so this is not a verse to encourage sinners with no nope. this is not a verse for everyone this is a reserve for believers and the bible says in verse that 29 so that you can know for whom he foreknew those that he foreknew he also predestined what he predestined these are words that i will let you to understand these are very theological words a lot of theology and doctrine
doctrines are founded on these words. Mostly on this verse. Those he foreknew, he knew them before time. Before they were born. He foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. So there are two words we are seeing here. He, those he foreknew, he did what? Predestined them to be conformed to the image of his son. That they may become like Jesus. Yani the agenda, the desire was that those people that God foreknew before time, before even the creation of the earth, even alone before they were conceived, before even in eternity past, he, those he foreknew, in eternity past, he also predestined them. We'll see what that means. He predestined them to be conformed, that they may become like his son, the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Verse 30, another important verse. Moreover, those he predestined, number three, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. Do you understand these words? Now, these are the words that I will be dealing with. These words, they are words that are used to describe and to talk about salvation. If you don't know these words, if you don't understand them well, and you can't explain them, and you are not built on the foundation of these terms, then you may not understand well the concept of our salvation. There are three few words that we have understood. Number one, it is he foreknew. Getting to know them before time. Predestined. Pre means before. Destiny. Destined. Destination. Before time. Before it came to pass. And pre for a new predestined. Then those he predestined, he called them. Those that he called, he justified them. And those he justified, he glorified them. Do you understand these terms in application to salvation? So today, I want to talk about divine election. Tomorrow, we have elections in our country. In Kiambu County, we have got two elections. And you know what to elect means. It means to do what? To simply choose. Wow. And that is very important. But why I have seen that mostly the two horses, you see these others are called donkeys. <laughs> in every race in our nation, it has become a nation of horses and donkeys. And they were, how we punda nuawidi, uh uh, farasi nuawidi, gine ni punda. So I don't know. Why they, they say punda, it's not a good way to describe others. So we have like two great candidates and people are convincing us, the politicians, they convince us why we should choose them or elect them. And everybody begins to say why you should. They give reasons. They convince you. They make themselves to be the best. And so, when you are choosing them, you choose them on the basis of many things concerning those people. Amen. 
that is election. But godly election is not like our election. To elect it means to choose. God choosing us. But as we shall understand, his choosing us is not based on us. When we elect people, we elect them based on them, not based on us. Hey, praise the Lord. But when God chooses a man, and when God is doing an election, and he is electing people, he never chooses you because of you. He chooses you because of himself. So anything that moves him to choose or to elect people, it is not on account of the people being chosen, it is on account of the one making the choice. Wow. And now this is very important to understand about salvation. And listen, election is an act of God. It is, election is an act of God before creation in which he chooses men for salvation. Election is an act of God before creation in which he chooses men for salvation. That is what we call divine election. An act of God. Wonderful. Nobody did anything, did any campaign. It is an act of God before creation. Please note those elements. Before creation, so that he can do what? Which he chooses men for salvation. That is an act of God. He does it alone. Before the creation, God chose men, those who will be saved. That is divine election. Just as the Bible says about when there is the purpose of election, divine election, about Esau and Jacob. Well, before they were born, whilst they were still in their mother's womb, God chose Jacob and he did not prefer Esau. When it came to the election of God, he chose one, he did not choose another. Nothing they had done, it was simply an act of God. And so we must understand, when it comes to salvation, salvation is an act of God. Amen. It's not an act. Jesus told his disciples, is it in the book of uh, John chapter number 15 verse 16? John 15 verse 16. Look at that. Can we see what the Bible says? You did not choose me, but I chose you. Look at that. You did not choose me. It is I who chose you. I chose you and appointed you. This did not just happen when he was choosing them. It happened. That is why even when Jesus came to the earth, the people he chose to be his disciples, they were not chosen at that moment. They had been chosen before the creation of the earth. You did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you. Now, there is another word that we are saying, predestined. To predestinate something. In Kikuyu Tugaga at the Aria E Menye Ire O Tene for a new Aria E Menye Ire O Tene predestinate Neo Ore Reidie. You see, when you preach that in Kikuyu, you will preach good news. Because you will be able to flow. He, a 
akimoreria he he predestined them and the predestination it is that those people he that, that he foreknew that they would become in they would be conformed into the image of his son so we were predestined for unknown by god chosen by god then that we may become no or that we may come to him and when we come to him we may be conformed to the image of his son and i want to let everybody hear from me and to hear clearly god did not save you to have to have you or to make you have the image of a certain man a man of god whom you love god is conforming you to have the image of christ not the image of a man of god praise the lord in fact the man of god you are trying to be like he is also trying to be like christ so the work you should be doing it is to work on yourself to become like Christ not to become like a man of God somewhere and that is why when we talk of men there is limitation because we have a craze in our generation everybody wants to be like someone it is good we imitate them but imitation doesn't come and mean that we want to be like so and so it is that we want to imitate the aspects of Christ in them what makes them to be like Christ not to talk like them not to have the mannerisms of this man the way they preach the way they do things and all those things these are not the things and when the bible says of predestine to predestine means to decide before time to decide before time or to foreordain to decide before time that is what is to predestine to decide before time or to foreordain and that one can only be an act of god nobody can be able to foreordain things you cannot even predestine before the next hour what you will be able to do because you don't have control of a time only god can predestinate or oh, that is there is only a reserve for god he can only predestine because only him knows everything about time and what we say here I, i don't want to get into theological discussions because these topics they bring a lot of divisions in bible school and people never agree but my point and my purpose it is not to arouse discussions and questions my agenda it is to bring information learning transformation establishment in the truth so that you can be effective in your work and in your work for Christ praise the lord so i'm not here to raise any theological discussions that is not my agenda i always love what paul told timothy never uh, enter into those discussions they make you ungodly and they defile your hearers so that is why you will never see me make any discussion with anyone about these few things they make many ungodly when we talk of god's election god choosing us for salvation you were chosen by god to be saved predestined before even the foundations of the earth before even you were conceived in your mother's womb that one is just few years ago this may be according to your age but think of eternity past before god created the earth before god said let there be the heavens and the earth before genesis 1 
that time before Genesis 1, God chose you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Mimi si yo asasa, mimi si yo aleo. Nye dile wa aleo, nye dile wa atene. Tero si yo gede wa atene. Eko guga katete wa miyaka igana. Oh, nye miyaka ya kwa doge mimenya. I, I was existing in God even before the earth existed. And listen, I will still be existing in God after the earth ceases to exist. So if you want to understand me, uh, you cannot explain me with the limited number of years I have lived here. I, am li I lived in eternity past and I will live in eternity with him. Therefore, my life can only be described in him. Let your life, anything that you talk about your life, be in relation to him. That I am in him before I was in this world. I was in God. Amen. Be after I die. And after this earth is wrapped up and removed, I will still be living. So I am an eternal being. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Do you understand yourself? Therefore, a man cannot be explained fully besides God. You cannot be able to to talk about a man outside God. Because if you talk, you will ask me how old I, I am. But I will tell you, before I was even conceived, before even the earth was formed, I existed in God. And God chose me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God chose me and even after I will be long gone, I will still be living with him and in him eternally. I am an eternal being. And I want to say, when it comes to predestination, there, the, there is that which God ordained, foreordained people who will be saved. And the discussion in theology where people don't agree is that has God also for ordained people who will not believe? Even if you do what? Has he predestined that some people belong to hell? And there will be others who will go to heaven. Did God know those who will go to heaven and those who will go to hell? Then if he knew that those who will go to hell, will it be their mistake? <laughs> you see, now that is the theological questions we discuss in, in Bible school. Whose mistake will it be? Because God foreordained those who will be going to eternal life and those who will be born again. And he also predestinate those who will not believe. And then they can ask, whose fault is it? Is there a person who can be able to rise and say, I was ordained not to believe? Do you believe there is someone who can reach a point there and say, Mimi, ndiyo wale walikuwa wamechaguliwa, nisiamini na niende kuzimu. Kwa hivyo kwenda kwangu kuzimu, sio shida yangu, mungu alipanga. Graph Nejole, that is something we call fatalism, fatalism, whereby it is like everything has been ordained and it will go this way and man has no choice. But I want to tell you, that is not the truth. When it comes to this, there is something I want you to know. Can you read the book of uh, Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 17? Ezekiel 
chapter 33 verse 17 verse 11 let's read verse 11 let's do that quickly and the lord will bless us ezekiel 33 verse 11 what does the word of god say Let me see what Ezekiel 33 verse 11 says. Ezekiel 33 verse 11 says, Say to them, this is God's prophet, as I live, says the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Wow. You see that? So, God, it is not God's will. And God is not happy when someone dies in sin. But rather, that the wicked turn from his way and live. My pleasure, it is that the wicked may turn from his way and live. I have no pleasure for someone to die in wickedness. And then he says, turn back, turn back from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? So when men come to a point of dying, it is not God's pleasure that anyone should die in sin. And in wickedness because he knows those who die in wickedness were predestined they will go to hell they will be punished by God so there is no person that God says that this man I predestined him that he would die and go to hell it is that God is telling them turn from your evil that you may live. And that is why God always proclaimed the gospel. He allowed people to know the truth. And now the people had to make choice. It is the choice that people make that agrees with the predestination of God. If you choose to be live in Jesus, it means you were predestined for eternal life. If you don't believe, you get into the category of those who were predestined for damnation. You understand now? So, there is no one who can blame God. And there is no one who will ever be in heaven because of themselves only. No. They will be there because they had the gospel and they knew about Jesus and they turned to him for salvation and therefore those who turn to God for salvation were ordained for eternal life those who will reject the gospel amen and all of them will have opportunities God reveals himself in different ways. You may ask me, Pastor, what about those people who died before we, they had the gospel? Now those are theological questions we ask. There is a way in which God revealed himself to them. God, in eternity past, he revealed himself in diverse ways, in different ways to people. But in these last days, he is talking about his son. Those who sinned without the knowledge of the gospel, they will be judged by God according to the knowledge that he had given them. Because every generation, even those who did not know Jesus, there was the way God revealed himself to them. And therefore, he will use their knowledge and will judge them that way. Now, that is why I am saying, in the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2, 
First Timothy chapter 2. We, we read this last week. First Timothy, we read chapter 2. And look at verse 3. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 4. Look at verse 4. Mm -hmm. If we can use the amplified, no, no, let's use the same one. God desires all men to be saved. Do you see that? Who desires all men to be saved. Now, will all men be saved? Now, you just answer me. God desires that all men to be saved. Now, my question is, will all men be saved? It's a yes or no. Will all men be saved? No. That is the answer. But was it God's desire for them to be saved? Yes. Simply because it is God's desire, does it mean it qualifies all men? No. Therefore, has God done everything required for all men to be saved? Yes. But will all men be saved? No. Why will some not be saved? Wow. And leave alone that. Let's ask a question. Are all men saved now? No. That is now the simple question. Why is it? That some are not saved today. Why is it that people are not saved? Because they have rejected Jesus. So if Jesus was to come today. Was it his will that all of them to be saved? Yes. But will all of them be saved? No. Then if he comes and he doesn't. Find those who are, he finds those who are not saved. It means they will be taken to hell. And so they were predestined to destruction. Let me read for you two other scriptures. John chapter 5 verse 38 to verse 40. John chapter number 5. We read verse 38 to verse 40. This is what the Bible says. But you do not have his word abiding in you. Because whom he sent, him you do not believe. Now look at this category of people. Jesus is talking to people who actually are getting themselves on the side of those who were predestined for destruction. Because they have rejected to believe him that God has sent. Verse 39. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. Verse 40 is the one that I want. But you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. It is their willingness. God gives people opportunities. But it must be their choice, their decision. So when it comes to God having predestined people to eternal life it is those who will be willing and the willingness will be as a result of making a choice to believe in the son of God if they don't then they are those who are predestined for destruction are you now getting understanding now are you now finishing your battles with me theologically let me read for you more scriptures John 3 verse 18. John 3 verse 18. I just want to finish up this because I want to do chapter part 2 next week. He who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe. So there are two people. Those who will believe and those who will not believe. 
As I told you this week, last week, I witnessed to a person and encouraged him to know Jesus and to live for Jesus. But he said, I will not. Now, that was someone who decided. And when you decide not to believe, you make yourself condemned. You align yourself to those who were predestined to go to hell. Hatiri ya duma adiketu wa maritu wa mao niyo magadhi ya matuini na ariya magadhi ya kwa goma. It is those people who will make their choices. So your choice is very important. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed. In the name of the only begotten son. Matthew chapter 23 verse 37. Matthew 23 verse 37. Matthew 23. Thank you. Look at this. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem. The one who kills the prophets. Prophets are not those people who prophesy about the future. No. Prophets are those who tell you the word of God. There is two ways of prophecy. The foretelling, which is to, to talk about future events. And there is the foretelling, telling people what God is saying. So like what I am doing, I am a prophet of God. Because I am telling forth what God is saying. So Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and the prophets... One who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. How many times have we gone to preach to people and we tell them the traditional gods you are going back to. Our fathers worshipped them and God revealed them himself to them through that way. Because they had not come to know the truth. And that is the way God revealed himself to them. But now he commands that everyone believe in Jesus. If you insist not about Christ... There is no more hope for you. Praise the Lord. Yes, he has sent prophets. He, you stone them. You kill them. Those people do all manner of things to pastors. And they say all manner of things. But these are the people Jesus was weeping for. He wanted to gather them, but they were unwilling. When people reject the Savior... When people reject Jesus, there is no more hope for them. Look at this. But you were not willing. So it means salvation takes the willingness of the person that God wants to save. If you are unwilling, the Bible says, Behold, I am standing at the door of your heart and knocking. If any man, that is Revelation 3 verse 20. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, of, the door of his heart, I will come in and dine with him. So what happens? You can choose to open for him. And then it means when you open the door of your heart for the gospel, then it means you were predestined for eternal life. If you don't open the door, there is no hope for you. Because there is no other way. Unfortunately, God has only made only one door to eternal life. And that is Jesus. Can I say that again? Unfortunately, there are no two doors to heaven. God has chosen to make only one door for anyone who will go to eternal life. And that is 
Jesus. We cannot bring any other name, any other tradition, any other sacrifice. Brethren, we will not argue in this. It is one and it is once for all. Jesus, the door to eternal life. When he wanted to gather them, they were not willing. That is why when you teach people, when you preach to people, they are not willing to come to Jesus. Who unto them? That is why we should always pray for sinners. We should always carry the burden of those people who are not born again. And that is why in the book of Matthew 11, verse 28, Jesus said, Come to me. All. How many? All. So he did not discriminate. He did not specify. Matthew 11 verse 28. Come to me all of you. Who labor and are heavily laden. And I will give you rest. So it means. It is the invitation to all. Did you know in the Bible, the Bible says, is it in the book of Matthew 22? A man had a great banquet for his son. And he invited people to come for the wedding feast. But many, those who were invited, they turned down the offer. He invited them. So everybody is invited into the kingdom of of God, but it will take your personal decision to get there. Invitation only will not get you to eternal life. Because you can invite people even to your wedding. My brother has a wedding. He will invite people, but there are those who will fail to come. Was it his mistake? No. So everybody has been invited, but not everybody will respond to the call. And therefore, those who, re who fail to respond to the call, they align themselves with those who were predestined for destruction. And therefore, you were predestined even to eternal life. Let me finish with these four things about our election. Ephesians 1 verse 4 to 6. These few things, please note them as you go about our election that means our election or rather we were chosen before the foundation of the earth that is number one thing about our election we were elected by god that means we were chosen before the foundation of the earth look at ephesians 1 verse 4 and then we will read 2 Thessalonians 2.13. Ephesians 1, 4 to 6. The Bible says, just as he chose us. Look at that. That means as he elected us in him before the foundation of the world. Do you see now? He chose us. So our election did not just happen the other day, the Bible says we were chosen in him, in Christ, before the foundation of the earth, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Verse 5, what does verse 5 say? Having predestined us, look at the word, having predestined us to adoption, there is another word we will discuss about our adoption as sons. When we talk of salvation, these topics you need to know them. When we talk of our adoption as sons, adopted sons, by Jesus Christ himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, and verse 6, to the praise of his glory, which he made us accepted in the beloved. Wow. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. What does the Bible say there? But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you. Brethren, 
beloved by the Lord because God from the beginning he chose you for salvation hallelujah I was chosen from the beginning for salvation through sanctification that is another word we will talk about salvation and sanctification by the spirit and the belief of truth that is number one thing about our election God's election for us, it means he chose us, he elected us before the foundation of the earth. Number two, our election is unconditional. Our election is unconditional. I want to explain that. Ate gayato dhurire bere ya medhigi ya the etanaru tutuike ake. That is when we were chosen. Number two to iga, our election is unconditional. Eke ide mutariri what that means. That means our election, it is not conditioned upon anything that God sees in us. Amen. Gotiri odo gai oni re theini waku nige tha gothure. Me mudo no ge. Oki hika he kiri amothuri onete. I he mudo ina ka kari ke oni re. But when it comes to God, our election is not conditioned upon anything that God sees in us that makes us worthy of His choosing. Or of being chosen by him. That means there is nothing that God saw in you that made you worthy of you being chosen by him. Unconditional. 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 I think I'm limiting myself trying to explain. Gutiari udo no mwe aroraga. Hakuna chochote. Nobody here should think God chose you because of being white or black or being learned or being male or being female. Nothing. If you think because you know you would have faith. By the way, he didn't choose you because you would have faith in him. He didn't choose you because you would serve him. No. If he chose you because he knew you would serve him, then it means that was the condition. No. He never chose you for salvation because you would have faith or you would do anything. Let me explain further. Being unconditional, it means our election is God's sovereign choice. God's, it is sovereign choice. Hey, God's sovereign choice. Neithura liya kewe mwene egai. Dathuri le nitodo wake. Na nikio oigete, esau githura, jakufu gemudhu, gemweda, gemudhura. When he chose people for salvation. Ili ukuje katika ufalme. Ndiyo maana kuokoka. Nobody. That is means. This is the point. Our election is solely by grace. That is what I mean. It is solely by grace. Nothing less, nothing more. Nobody should think. Nobody should boast. Nobody should be proud. Ya kwamba umeokoka. Ya kwamba mungu alijua. Venye utamtumikia. Venye utakuwa mchungaji. Ndiyo maana alikuokoa. Apana. Haku kuokoa. Maana alijua utakuwa mchungaji. Apana. No. He saved you by grace. Let me say better. Our election is not based or influenced by anything good a person does or will ever do. 
our election is not based or influenced by anything good a person does or will ever do. Nalikorwa do manyito horo wo honokio. You will stop being proud you are born again na wengine hawajaokoka. Kiangalia wenye dhambi, you will never be proud. You will be humble. When you understand, listen again I'm saying, our election is not based or influenced by anything good you have done or you will ever do. The gainio inuge kawega muno. Nio inuka hujiria do giriga na mahonoke. Nikio aku honokirie. That means your salvation was conditional. Todu wagi kuhonoka gia nigeeta. Todu. There was no reason why you were saved. No reason about yourself. Stop boasting you were born again. Nobody. That is why it is solely by grace. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. You need to know this about salvation. It is purely on the basis of grace. Look at this. Who saved us or who has saved us and called us with the holy calling not according to our works but according to his own purpose and grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. I like the word. Are you loving this? Before time began. But Paul was saying who saved us and called us not according to our works. Sio kwa sababu ya matendo tulio kuwa tumetenda ama sio kwa sababu ya matendo tutakayotenda. Ugu wanadako ono kagi ya tetodo wa maudu marioka amwekira. No. He, you were saved according to his own purpose and grace. Purpose and grace. So your salvation should be understood from God's perspective. His purpose and his grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Kwa hivyo, salvation is by grace alone. If it is because of works, it is not salvation. Kwa hivyo wale ambao wana wanamtumikia Mungu ili wafike binguni you will not make it I want to say that whoever maybe will ever watch this this kind of preaching if there is something you are doing to merit and to qualify for eternal life it is not the eternal life given by Jesus there is nothing that you can do to be saved. It is only purely by grace. Ndiyo maana unaona kuna watu wanasema some religions may teach if you do this and this and this you will go to heaven and meet the Lord and all these things. No, it is not what you do. It is what he did for you. Purely by grace. So that nobody will post. By the way, tukifika binguni, kama ni matendo, wengine wataanza kuringa. Tenue niye da kihono kirio todo, dari muge kumukira. Da hono kirio todo, da shiareto, nobody. That is why in heaven, when we get to heaven, we will all say, we didn't deserve this heaven, it is grace. That has qualified us for heaven. Wow. Let me finish this. I mean number three. Hmm. Our election. Believing the gospel. Is the reason. That proves. That God chose us. Believing the gospel. 
is the reason that proves that God chose us. Wakati watu wanaamini injili the good news believing the gospel is the proof or what proves that God chose us. First Thessalonians let's read the scriptures. First Thessalonians 1 verse 4 to 5. First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 1 verse 4 to 5. Let's get there. Our believing, knowing, beloved. Look at this. Knowing, beloved brethren, you are election by God. Verse 5. For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power, in the Holy Spirit, and in much assurance as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. That means when they believed the gospel for their election. You know you were elected. That means you were chosen for salvation when you believe the gospel. If you don't believe the gospel, then it means you were not chosen for eternal life. If you fail, but if you have believed, it means you were elected by God. Number four. And then we finish with number five. Number four. The purpose of our election is to live for the praise of God's glory. The purpose of our election, the purpose why God chose us, it is that we may live for the praise of God's glory. So everybody must know here now, grace of God that brought salvation, which brought your election. The purpose of our salvation, of all of our election, it is to praise. It is for the praise of God's glory. Ephesians 1 verse 12. So that you can live for the praise. That your life now may be lived for the glory of God. Are you understanding now? The purpose of you being chosen, it is for the praise of God's glory. You were not chosen for yourself. To live to please yourself. To enjoy your life for yourself. You were chosen by him for him. Wow. You understand that? You were chosen by him for him or for himself. You were chosen by God. You were elected by God. Not by men. Elected by God. For himself. That means, for himself means for the praise of his glory. That means the way you live after God chooses you, it must always seek to bring glory to his name. Bring glory to God. So, what are you doing with your life? Are you living for the glory of God? Did you know that you were chosen? The purpose, it is for the glory. Look at this. Can we begin verse 11? I like verse 11 so much. In him, we have obtained an inheritance. I will be teaching us on that. Being predestined, I like the word, for ordained, appointed before time. According to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Verse 12. That we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. That, that means we believed in him and thus being elected for God. Being elected by God for God. Made by God for God. Praise the Lord. I am here for God. My life is for the glory of God. 
I marry for the glory of God. I dress for the glory of God. I am buying the car for the glory of God. I am desiring to earn more money for the glory of God. He chose me for the praise of his glory. Therefore, anything I do after my election, it should always be for the praise of his glory. Do you understand that? Atuthurira ni undu wa itumi ciake na wegocio wake wali nigetha tuture muturira wa kumugocithia and finally wow this is election election should inspire endurance election number 5 election should inspire endurance and evangelism it should en- inspire you to endure ukirereria tondu wi muthure ni ngai ni ukumenya wi muthure ni ngai ugakirereria it should inspire endurance and evangelism to reach out others with the message of salvation you should it should inspire endurance gukiririria tondu thuritwo ni ngai na ningi niki tondu maundu mothe marutithanagia wira ki kia wega because you are chosen by god and it should also inspire evangelism to reach out to others with the message of the gospel na nigetha ni undu wa kumenya ni ngai wa guthurire kugerera kiugoini giake you should also evangelize you should reach out to others god telling them that jesus chose you that you may go to eternal life everyone is chosen for eternal life let me say in simple words about election all men have been chosen for eternal life but they must make a choice whether they will accept that eternal life god has chosen all men but every one of us must make a choice to accept god's message of salvation that is why we should go preaching to people usijali watu kama wameokoka ama hapana go telling them that is why it is called the great commission go tell them Go tell it all to the mountains. Go everywhere. Young people, where are you school? Tell your young com- comrades in high school, in university, in your place of work. Don't be silent. You came to know him because you received the message. Somebody needs to hear the message and you are the messenger. That is why you were chosen that you may go spreading that many may come to eternal life and we can read that in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 10 this is our last reading 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 10 look at what Paul says therefore i endure all things not for my sake for the sake of the elect new do what do aria gai athurete matari marahonoka nikio gukirireria maundu mothe because there are people who god has elected for eternal life you need to endure look at this that they may also obtain the salvation now do you do you look at the scripture ni urono riya madiko maroiga i endure all things for the sake of the elect that they may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus so what is paul saying these are people who have not received or obtained this salvation but they are elected by god kwia do mathuretwo ni ngai no matire maramukiro honokio you understand now the scripture and because of that i will endure 
that I may reach them that they may because they have been elected by God that I may reach them with the message so that they may obtain the message of salvation so if I don't preach to them there are people who will not come and I was saved to save others I must know when you endure as a young person you are not just enduring for yourself endure for those people whom God knows that they will obtain salvation through you there are people that God wants to bring into the kingdom through you amen and therefore because they are elected but yet they have not come they have not yet come but yet they have been elected how will they come somebody must endure today endure the challenges Paul endured kupigwa kwenda yani kudharauliwa you know the, the sufferings you know the sufferings of Jesus he endured that you may obtain salvation. Can you know that God also has planned? There are people he knows. You are the vessel. You are the hand that will get them from hell. You, you are witness. You are sharing the gospel to them. It will make them turn to Jesus. Therefore, I encourage you. You need to endure for the sake of those people. You need to never be silent. Go telling everybody. You never know who is the one. Because the Bible says, the word of God is seed. Sometimes you speak to someone today and they throw their hands against you. But there is something that someone told me last week. When I witnessed to that young man and who openly rejected Jesus and who said bad words against the Lord Jesus Christ and preaching us preaching the gospel, the gentleman who was with me told me, Pastor, I want to tell you, when I was a drunkard, just like that man, that is how I used to speak. But there is something. Any word we were told by someone who cared about our lives, when we were alone, without the influence of drinking, we remembered those words. And therefore he told me, Pastor, I want to tell you, this young man, when he goes alone, he will remember, I was with Pastor Ben. And he told me about Jesus. And those words begin to speak to them so greatly, intensely, until they make a decision. And that young man encouraged me. Even when people don't say yes now, the word of God will judge them. It will continue to speak to them until they will make up their minds. Brethren, you were elected. God bless you. Wow. Wow. I'm elected. Not because of anything. Ni gutire kura detha. No gai yake jikiria kura yake. Na gai na manama age goikiria yake. Kura ya gai newe hotanaga. Na todu gai ni agoikiria kura yake. Wewe muhotani. Gutire undu no mwe watumire agoikiria kura. No akiona agoikiria ke. Kura ya gai na omudu wothe wina kura ya gai tikirugame aya mokoshokeria gai gado na likorwo na ma ni mwanyito horoshio na